It's a beautiful day here today up at the off-grid homestead. Uh, we just finished up the workshop build there yesterday. Today is a very exciting day because today we're installing the battery bank here, the solar powered battery bank here in the off-grid cabin. Now uh, this is this is a really exciting day because it's a, the final piece of the puzzle here. Not only is it a critical part of the whole deal here and give us all the power we need here for this winter. It's also the last project we have here for winter before we get onto traffic. Surely there's little things, um, little projects here in the air, but this is the last big one so I can get started traffic. So I'm excited guys, we're gonna get right out of here. See, I have all my batteries here ready to go, but I'm not quite ready for them yet. Okay guys, so I'm just building a plywood battery box here. Now we're gonna have to vent it to the outside here. and. I'm making it very big. Now, uh, I only want to do this once. This is the last battery box I intend, oh shit, I intend to make here. So, the beauty of this system is the, the headroom you have for expansion. And, uh, you know, we can do, we can add more batteries, we can add more panels in, in quite an easy fashion. So, that's the goal here today uh, to get her all set up. But, you know, you ever want more very easy to do because you can fit a lot of batteries in this box we got an oversized charge control the whole deal it's just it's just right on so um i am building this out of standard plywood i'm just making this battery box out of standard plywood it's it's five eighths here and uh, i'm assembling it up here because it's easier to do it that way than to uh try and haul the box up the ladder because it is a tad tight now uh I have all kinds of OSB. Now I have all kinds of OSB there outside, but it's weathered and it wouldn't look too nice in here. I know this isn't a very pretty spot in my cabin with all the wires and stuff, but you know. So I very reluctantly paid the price and bought a bought a sheet of standard plywood, so I'm just putting the end pieces on here now, guys. You can see, guys, this is going to go. It sits right flush with my floor, this section I have here. And then it's going to go right up against the wall, probably. So it's going to it's gonna slide under my fuse box. I'm going to move the inverter and this battery out of the way. Um, so that'll be good, but... This, this should be able to hold about twice as many batteries as I have uh, and then I can use it in all different kinds of applications and, and, and stuff there guys. Now I also have a lid for it here, see if that lines up. So I just have my Ukrainian socket set here and uh, I'm just going to disconnect some batteries here. Um, this battery here is a RV Marine Deep Cycle. Now at the time I didn't really know better, but this is actually not a great choice for what we're doing here. Um, it's just not, it just doesn't have the right characteristics. No. What I got here is a new hole socket. I didn't have the right size, and just buy a bunch of them. And what I'm going to have to do here is drill this all out. Uh, I'm putting this piece of PVC out through the outside there. So it's going to have to be drilled through um, drilled through the wall here. And I'm not looking forward to it, so I'm trying to get her done here, you know, first thing. Start it up high, you know. Uh, so um, it's got to be right up there so I can get her hydrogen gas rises and that's what we're trying to vent here from these lead acid batteries that I have so. I think if I go like I don't want to be too high uh, it would be ideal on the lid but if I go on the lid then it will be an issue closing the lid and stuff so uh, I'm gonna shoot here and see how it goes. Ooh, she bites. Okay, so you see this? It 
it's marked on the wall where I need to drill. <laughs> Initially, I was pretty bummed out to see that this hole had come through right where the shingle is. But what I've actually done here is tucked it underneath. Now I had to bore it all out because I couldn't take this apart. I had to go in all as one or never get that hose clamp back on there. So it was a prick. You know, underneath here is a mess, certainly. There's a lot of material on these walls because there's one, two, and then a sheet of plywood. So I've tucked it under here. Now I'll come back with the other piece as well there and tuck it in there too and then from there it'll shed water over top and down but I better make sure I get her put into the box before I piss around with this too much oh yeah and we're gonna have a lot to cut here in fact I should do that now I got lots to do here lots and lots now you want to see my bugger up for the day It don't, it don't actually fit. Now the reason for that is because I come through here and I put my corner pieces on the outside instead of the inside. So I'm down uh, an inch and a quarter I guess. So I'll have to come back through here and cut off uh, an inch 
inch and a quarter off these corner pieces, put them back in, and then this will sit, you know, level. So uh, at least we'll be able to make it work. Sometimes you have them kind of wrong and you kind of fuck it all up. But this one will be fine. Yeah, I guess we can always change it. here now guys and now it does sit perfectly flush with the floor this is what I wanted to do initially I just made a little bit of a mistake there but got her corrected here in no, no time clock guys so um, I gotta finish this vent and then uh, all our work should be inside here but I gotta get these batteries hooked together before it's uh, dark inside here because that would be no good guys so I'm gonna seal this up and bolt her in there I shouldn't do that quite yet Got that wedge there now and now we're under a two foot overhang here so this is very it's, it's honestly unnecessary but we don't want water in there so we'll just pepper with the silicone here pretty good so at this point it's exactly what I'm looking for this is totally I just barely squeaked by with that now I'm going to tuck this vent the right way to hold her there for us. Now we'll get this. So the back half of my cabin is a nice place to hide stuff. It's because uh, you never see it. But this is so nice you nearly want to show it off. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. So I did have to, like, I cut this section out here so that I could slide it under. I had to slide the lip under and then twist it in. And then I slid this one under there as well. Now, you see, I got her sealed up with silicone. It's white. It's it's not the prettiest thing. But uh, then I screwed her in uh, and pinched down all the silicone. And now her vent is good. And that is awesome. I am happy with how that went a lot smoother than I thought. You know, things like this here, man. This ladder might fall, though. You see how I all over the place here. But things like that you worry about. You're like, oh, fuck. Is it going to work? And you kind of ponder it a tad. And then you get to do it. And it's easy as can be. So I like to do the hardest things first. And then mosey on to the left. And it pretty in the bush here today. So we got to hook up solar power at, at workshop yet. That's easy. And uh, look at the hoor frost out here today, boys. Well, this is maddening. And uh, we're gonna get this solar put in in, in, do, in in just the perfect time because I'm making all this power now. I have nowhere to store it. So now you have a couple of days like today and a shitty battery. Well, you're in the dark like I am here. So this is my intake vent. And I drilled this hole out. Now I have every hole saw but the right one. So uh, I should be able to force this one in here. But I was going to glue this, but if, we, if it's this snug, we're not going to need to. So anyway, guys, I got her hooked up here. Now uh, I'm going to have to get my batteries hooked up so we can see and charge batteries and all kinds of stuff. So we'll get that done here and then uh, go from there, turn the lights on and show you again. Okay, so now the prick decides to turn on. So we're back in action here. We gotta get these batteries put in right away. Turn this light off too. So this has been a struggle. So I can't tell you how, how big of a relief it'll be to get this stuff figured out. So I'm just not sure here, guys. I will have to. I'm not sure how far away I want to put all this stuff. Now I think. I'll move the charge controller up. We're still gonna have to put a. Uh, we're still gonna have to put the hinges on this and all that stuff as well. I'm trying to think about how I'm gonna do this all actually. Um, maybe should I even put the door or uh, the the lid on here already? It's uh, hard to say. But uh, I, I do got to get these batteries hooked up. Now when the batteries are hooked up, 
It's not gonna be so easy to move this around. I do need a gap here in the wall to uh, to uh, uh, so I can feed my wires through down here, probably through the bottom, as well as uh, for for my door to swing and stuff. So, um, yeah, we'll get everything just kind of hanging here. So, um, yeah, I better I better put that door on here first thing, and then. We'll go from there. What I'm gonna do here now, guys, is I got this. What is it called? Closed cell insulating foam tape. What I'm trying to do here is get this. This top section will be the most important of the whole deal here, because uh, we need it to seal up and be our airtight. Because I put the vent on the bottom, right, and I'll feed the wires to the bottom. And we have some sealing to do there as well uh, because it's going to rise. It's lighter than air and it's going to rise. So that that's why we're doing all this. So if we can put this on here and then put our door, you know, and we'll get her good and tight, like really good and tight on this, well then that should seal up the top. Now the vent is obviously on the bottom because the hydrogen isn't going to seep to that level it's going to stay stay high there so we're just gonna we're just gonna get her all the way around here guys now i've seen some guys had put like silicone on this well then like these are not maintenance free batteries they're lead that's why we're venting them they need to be maintained from time to time so you have to get in here but if you put that silicone then every time you come through there you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take it all off and reapply it, and it seems like a mess to me. So I did buy two rolls of this stuff because it was cheap. Uh, looks like a, I might just make her in one. So yeah, I'm in a panic here. Have been all day because I don't want to be in the dark tonight. Like I want to go trapping tomorrow. So I once we get these batteries hooked up, though, you know we're smooth sailing. little hinges now I bought these a while ago they're four dollars and uh, I never ended up using them so I've been looking for a, a place to use them here this whole while so uh, just putting hinges on these now uh, I'm just gonna put them right on the outside I have two the other ones already in um, it wouldn't hurt to have one in the center or a little more centralized there but that's fine Now I want this level and I want to suck it down so it's really pushing down on my phone tape so See I'm going to angle this one down and cinch it right up See Now Now we'll see if the damn thing swings And I got an extra screw Yeah, as long as it doesn't rip that tape off, but I don't think it's going to. See? Now, I know I got lots of room on the other side. Okay, that's good, guys. See, I'm just going to put it like this, guys. What I should really have is one of those like I have in my, uh, in, in the shitter there. I want to push that down, I do. So that's just going to hold like that, and that's how we'll latch it here. For now, anyway. I should have put those strap hinges on the inside, shouldn't I have? Oh well. What can you do? I'm going to panic. I'm going to be in the dark here in like five seconds. So, we'll worry about that bridge when we cross it. Not we'll see how it pops up. I'm not super happy with that. I tell ya. Um, I should. I definitely should have put the hinges on the inside. But, 
Um, and then, yeah, uh, I don't like this latch on here. It's not the latch I'm, I'm looking for. It's just not ideal, but it's gonna work for now. That's for down sure. So what I'm gonna do here now is seal up all, all our joints and everything here on this box. Hopefully there's lots of stove going here. This is acoustical. I figure it's as good as anything. And I, I want to pay particular attention to the, the top, top sections of this box. All of the floor here. Like to seal up around this open vent doesn't make much sense. But. Okay, so I pulled my inverted through. And then, uh, I f it looks like I forgot to seal the bottom. It doesn't really matter. I drilled the hole through there. That's going to connect my charge controller to my batteries. So that'll be good. Now, uh, let's get these batteries put in. Because this one, this goes to dying. A little bit heavy coming up the ladder there. There's no worries, huh? That's all for Good. I am glad. Right on. See, I put them right in the center. The beauty about this, this is a massive, pretty big battery bank now. You could fit twice as many batteries in here. You know, it's got that, it's got that headroom, which is nice. Feed this through up to charge controller here. So. This is a big job, this whole deal actually. There's, there's just a lot to, that needs to be done here, so I'm just gonna strip this. Or attempt to at the very least. And, uh, now, yeah, it certainly wouldn't hurt for this to be bigger. Now, it has, uh, I have 600 watts of solar. So that's what this needs to be sized for. Divided by 12 is 50, 50 amps. This is 8 gauge. I wouldn't mind if it was bigger, but it'll do the trick. What we're doing is getting our wires hooked up here from our charge controller to our batteries. Now I have 600 watts of solar, and that is honestly a stretch. Like it's, it's really never going to be that high. Um, but to what extent, I'm not sure. I haven't got a chance to monitor it properly, I think because of the battery bank and how that is all put together. So I'm just not all entirely sure what kind of power we're producing. Now, I would prefer this to be six gauge. It's just the way of the road. But it's what I have here and it's what it's gonna have to be. Now, where's my crimper? Read from the, I think it was the building standard there for uh, um, the states there that said 90 degrees Celsius 8 gauge can do 55 amps. That almost seems higher than I think. Now, this will never be 50 amps. It, will, it just won't. There's line loss. The chances those panels ever do 100 watts is a stretch. So this has to be sized to the amount of power we're putting to um, to the whole deal here. So uh, I, w I would prefer it to be six, but it really should work here. Now, um, yeah, so I have 600 watts and I use very little off the charge controller, but um, I would like, uh, let me know what you figure on this. So essentially this is like peanuts to, to change out if we want to guys, right? Like, uh, and it sure as hell isn't gonna blow up especially with these days we've been having here lately it's just not gonna happen so these are big ass connectors they're not the right diameter i'm gonna have to drill them out all oh, his fucking expensive whatever a train wreck so we're trying to avoid that if we can too so i cut all my holes through the bottom of the box here just trying to drive this these wires through so now we're gonna hook up our batteries using battery and we're gonna have
have to do because we're working with six volt batteries here is connect the positive and the negative to obtain 12 volts. Now you could hook these up in, in 24 as well. But uh, I'm keeping everything in 6 volts, although it would be nice to be in 12, because everything in my cabin is on 12 volt. All my plugs, all my lights, everything. So what we're doing here is connecting the negative and the positive from two batteries. So now we essentially have two, uh, two, two 12 volt batteries and they're big ass batteries because these batteries are 225 amp hours on six volts. So we connect uh, two, it gives us 450 amp hours, which is more than five times what I had before. And even more so because I think I've about nearly killed that poor battery. So from here, we got our two batteries. Okay, they're connected in parallel, in series, pardon me. So now, what we need to do is connect the positive and the negative together. So our negative and our positive, they need to go together here, guys. So you can see, I got these long ass, these are plenty good enough size, and they have to be sized for what size we need to draw, to draw from. Okay, so I also have to connect, make sure I don't bugger these up, but I have to connect these two there, and I'm going to have to drill them out a bit. See, they're just not quite the right diameter. So I, I bored this out, see now it fits. Just gonna finish connecting these and then once we connect that wire to the charge controller well then our lights will be good to go everything so so that's how we connect four six volt batteries in series parallel i think is how you call that so we got this is essentially 112 volt and this is essentially 112 volt 255 225 amp hour battery so now we have 455 amp hours now these these are golf cart batteries and i want to talk about these batteries in a second now this battery i have here is not quite the right properties characteristics that we need for for it to be just deadly so uh this is this is far more like business we just have these nuts on here of course and uh we will just give them a little bit of a tighten with the Ukrainian socket set but like it don't take much these here we don't we definitely don't want to over tighten them um snug them up I guess mm. so I'm not having a good go over here um trying to hook it up to my battery bag and it would only say 9.1 volts and beep and beep and beep hook it to the old battery it was fine it was working good so I don't know why it wouldn't have um, it wasn't working like it, it was sensing low voltage but everything's on 12 and you can see all my lines, everything's on 12, so it makes no sense. So I'm gonna have to look into that. I don't have a good explanation for it. I can't really do any research on it here. It's a bush. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Man. That's no worries, it's not critical right now. We got the batteries hooked up, so we're breathing a little easier. It's nice having a battery bank that isn't on you that isn't like watching the fuel gauge on the ram charger like it does. you you're not watching the whole thing go down this has been at 65 percent for about uh, an hour here i uh forget what percentage it was out when i first plugged it in but no it's good man we got all kinds of batteries here now but what i'm doing here now we're going to take this off and put it nice 
replace your pipe. So, uh, these are just, these are screws from my old charge controller. We're going to need them slides in and on, of course. One thing I didn't do initially when I first set up this charge controller was there's actually settings here for the size of the battery bank and the type of the battery bank. Now I have uh, flooded lead acid and it was set for sealed lead acid and I noticed an improvement once I set it to flooded and set my uh, capacity properly there. So there she be. So there's a lot of figuring we have to do. I wasn't sure on my figuring prior uh, because of the battery bank situation I had as to uh, power production and, and matters of the sort. So, um, my battery hasn't changed in, you know, a long time here. So, like, we have all kinds of power there now. Oh, right. I, uh, I don't know what we're to do. So, I'm not sure what we're going to do here about the inverter. I'll have to get that figured out and uh, see what's going on there. And then, uh, yeah, but let's get, we're good there. We don't need it. It's not a dire need right away. I will need it once it gets colder for my truck. But uh, let's go hook up solar power at the cabin, but, or at the workshop. But we better get dinner rolling here first. I have most definitely been eating this meal way too much lately. But what can you do? It's damn good. So I have pork chops and eggs. And I've been having it like every second day. Sick of it. Okay guys, so we're just in workshop here to get all my stuff ready to go. Now uh, I just had these lights running off this little battery I have here from a RAM charger. Is uh, put this battery that was in my cabin and see if it's up to snuff to do this job. Now all we gotta do is run those couple lights up top there. Uh, just four of them and then maybe a little bit of charging uh, but very little like we're doing a lot less over here than we were doing at the cabin that's for damn sure so that's nice when you got the light on there because we're pretty deep in there and I'm gonna I'm gonna tuck it right in the corner here because it's out of sight and out of mind now I gotta think about where I want to put this like I got all kinds of cable here, that's for sure. So, uh, this one's for my light. Uh oh. So, we're just gonna work. I'm getting all our connectors put on here. You see, I took these ones off the cabin. I'm gonna use them over here. On this one, where are my screws? You guys, it's gonna be tough to see back in here, but I'm gonna put it right in the center and the battery right in the Down that light sure is nice on the drill. I have two that go from here to here. And I forgot my set of pliers at cabin, so we'll go stir dinner here in a second. Now, I, I sure as hell hope this battery is still good, because all like all it's gotta do is power power four lights here. And uh, if it doesn't, I'll just get a new one. Probably the same grade, because you can get them cheap. But I don't know, man. We'll see. Like, I was trying to do a lot more at my cabin. And I've been hard on this poor down thing. Down hard on it. So, uh... Let's not bugger up clarity, eh? And see, this battery I got running, this, these lights is about to die, too. So I want to get it charged up. Yeah, she's gonna go dim here. Cause I don't wanna leave it in here. If it, I don't wanna leave it in here if it's low on charge. Cause it could freeze up in here, maybe, you know. And uh, that would be exactly terrible. So, I just have little screws in that controller. I'm gonna connect these two, and I'm gonna connect the other two. Okay, well, we're badly losing light in here. But, uh, yeah, so there's, they're 
just a couple connections, right guys? Like we have our solar panel positive and negative, our battery positive and negative, and our load positive and negative. Now I'm just connecting it right to the load to make things uh, easy how we got it. And uh, I'm only running 24 watts, which is two amps on a 20 amp charge controller. So, you know, it's, it's nothing. So this is not the crimping tool you want, but it works. And this is all 10 gauge, all of it. It's plenty oversized. And we still have that fuse, uh, that line from the, with that inline with 20 amp fuse on it. So it's all good to go. Now, what is trying to release this is? Ha! Fuck's sake. So, I have a tendency of assuming the worst when all of a sudden something don't turn on. 20 amp fuse, boys. I blew her. I must have been. Uh, I must have tapped some wires around there when I was pulling her off. And sure as shit, I've already taken apart the charge controller. It's always a simple thing. Got in a panic there because. Super quick and easy <laughs> install there. See, I just have my panels coming in to the. It's like. And uh, then my lights and my battery, fuse on the battery, put all kinds of excess wire in behind the battery, and then uh, that's all neat and tidy the way it's out there. As you can see, it's dead, 11.2 volts, that's not good. And there, turn the lights on and off. So, that's right on, but this is a good battery, and I don't want to ruin it, so... Uh, I'm gonna have to charge it up here. I'll just fire up the 12 valve and let it run while we have dinner. Cause if it frees up here, like it's nearly dead the way it's at, so it's not good. Well, I haven't started the old girl out in a few days. I forget how long I've been up here, but it's not very cold. But I don't like how that buzzer sounds. Yeah, it's nothing, but it didn't sound right. Probably cause I already hooked up the battery first. Maybe I shouldn't have. Anyway, I'm using this flashlight here, boys, because the phone died, eh? So that's how we got all that work done over there as well. Okay, okay. Oh, fuck, I need that thing, too. Just moseying around here. Fuck yeah, she's a beauty. That's a fuck sake. That was a real deadly quick install, too, boys. It's clean. It's clean. That's so deadly, we got to use all that stuff from the cabin in here. Didn't even burn the eggs, boys. That's perfect. Well, guys, this is a phenomenal meal. I love it. Um, lemon pepper on the pork, the fish, the chicken. Doesn't matter. That's the best. Only thing you don't put on beef doesn't really go good. Go with other things. We're going to eat this here and then hang out. We're pretty well done, Cooks, man. we got quite a bit left to do. There's always ten more things. done today you know I had been worrying about that battery bank for a while there was things I wasn't sure how I wanted to do or what batteries I wanted to use so there was a lot there that was kind of up in the air and I wasn't sure how I wanted to do things so I had been thinking of about it a lot and now that there's now that we're done that all that stress is kind of relieved but uh, not too bad I just had so many things on the go and all of a sudden I'm done now but just when you think you're done something, on comes the next thing. Which seems to be the inverter here now, because I, I don't know what the hell's going on with it. Um, 11.30, right on. We're super early. So we'll be to bed on time tonight. So I've been in such a panic here all day to get things done, because I want to be done this, get her going. I needed the power on in here, and then I need the power on the skate shack, and I want to go trap it tomorrow. So I haven't properly gotten a chance to explain everything I'm doing here so that's what I'm doing here now now it was inevitable that I did not have enough solar batteries I didn't just didn't have enough solar power to begin with 
So I began by, uh, so the first thing I did there was install a bigger, uh, more solar panels outside there. So I got 600 watts and I set that up so there's lots of room to play around and add more power or whatever. You're going to knock over the tripod out there, doggy. Licking the floor. And then uh, I got the big, uh, great big charge controller there so that I could play around, add more power. And then I built the, now I built the battery box so I could add. So it's, it's very customizable. There's lots of growing room there. So we can increase it and, and upgrade it as our as things evolve and as our interest expands there so uh yeah it's, it's awesome easily slap more batteries in that battery box twice as many actually that was about as big as i could make it out of a four by eight sheet of plywood without it hanging over the edge there so that's how i did that and then uh yeah so everything's right on there guys now talk to you about the batteries i chose now there was a few options for me there the big decision was agm or or flooded lead now the beauty of the agm they're just better uh the big thing is they don't release hot they, they don't release gases regularly because they're not they're not meant today they're sealed batteries the problem is they're twice the price now i Particularly when we're talking about four batteries, it didn't make any sense for me to go to AGM, just for a thought. Um, now, the cheapest, decent AGM battery I was buying was like 350 bucks. So you times that by four, and it didn't make any sense. Because you're paying double on an already, an already large sum. Now, yeah, so they're, they're, they are slightly better. They're probably slightly more efficient. And they're they're sealed, right? So you don't have to deal with the gas, but they're twice as much. Like four batteries, you're talking about fourteen hundred dollars. Now I don't know here on batteries because I looked at batteries. Usually I look at bringing things in from the states. Now it wouldn't let me bring anything in from the states. Now I realize it's a big package to ship around, but I've ordered bigger. I would imagine it's highly probable that we're dealing with an all kinds of environmental bullshit here north of the border that causes the batteries to be more expensive than what they are in the states because they were cheaper in the states so i couldn't bring them across now i came across that same those same issues when it came to uh, uh automotive paint and raptor liner and stuff there's two different categories based on environmental bullshit i wouldn't i wouldn't doubt it i don't know for sure so So uh, I could get the flooded lead asset, that one's 185 bucks a piece now. That might be cheaper in the States. I, I, everything is, okay, we pay more up here. In terms of bang for my buck, like I just built the <clears throat> battery box and put a piece of PVC out, and then all of a sudden we don't have to worry about, about the gas because we're venting it all outside. Now that's the beauty of it. Uh, put in the some time we make it work we can put them inside you can't put those batteries outside they don't take a charge they freeze up it's, it's a train wreck i don't care what kind of battery it is maybe lithium but like agm probably the same shit you put it outside you just can't do it now i really like how that battery box has turned out and how we've got it vented there uh, i'm very happy with that um now the same what we're really doing there is preparing for worst case ontario if if the battery if the charge controller shits a bed batteries overcharge release all kinds of hydrogen and we could be dealing with an explosion now it really is a worst case ontario but when we're talking about four batteries in comparison to one like you're four times more likely as far as i'm concerned i'm i'm sure not exactly but there's just a lot more being released from four batteries, it's just for sure. Now, uh, I've seen a lot of people also vent the AGM for the same reason of worst case Ontario. Now, I don't know if that's necessary, but still, it, it might not be a bad idea as far as I, I just don't know. But I, I realized that the six volt golf cart batteries are probably gonna give me my best flooded lead acid golf cart batteries were gonna give me my best bang for the buck. And so I have four 225 amp hour, um, six 
volt battery. So uh, I have 450 amp hours at 12 volt, and it's on 12 volt to keep this the same. Now, if you were to, if you had everything running off an inverter, well, then you just increase the voltage of your battery bank and then have smaller wire sizes. But everything here is running off 12 volt. So, so looking at those batteries, uh, I looked around. I have a hell of a time. Like there's things I buy at Princess Auto, like that vice. There's things I buy at Canadian Tire that are fine. There's things that are not so fine. And I was really, I had a hell of a time going in there and buying batteries. Um, so I really had to look around. I found these interstate ones. I had to order them in. That's why they're here later. It's my last project. But these interstate high cycle extreme, like they're a pretty high quality battery there, I think in like interstate lineup. And like, I think it's actually the best six volt golf cart battery they have. I might be wrong on that. There might be one above, but it's up there. Them were 185 and the batteries at Princess Auto were like 180. See them on sale 175, maybe they were 190 before. So it made all the sense in the world. I did have to pay $40 freight shipping on them. It just made more sense. I like Interstate's just such a more reputable brand. Um, I can't speak to it too much with my previous battery, but it's just not the right kind of battery for the job. It, it's just not the right kind of kind of battery. It's just not. And I I was hard on it. Like I'd kill it. I'd kill it countless times and it throws up. And, but so so I can't really speak to that. But it was sure nice. It sure worked out good there to put all that stuff into the workshop right at the same time we we're putting this stuff in. So now I got it hooked up there. Took no time. Worked out good. So now that battery will charge up there tomorrow. Got the other one that was in there charging right now on the 12 hour. And I think that system is going to do exactly what I, I needed to. And it's essentially the system that was in here. But I was just trying to do too much in here because the lights are on here. A longer period of time and I'm trying to charge all kinds of things like I couldn't even charge my laptop there towards the end of it in these cloudy overcast days one battery so I couldn't work on the video so I had a real problem there and I just need more solar power there's no two ways about it so now like that battery I had is 88 amp hours I think now now I have 455 so the, yeah there's there's more than five times the amount of storage there and that battery would have been out the way out of the store so I doubt it still had the same capacity so we're talking about a lot of power all of a sudden now I imagine because we have to size these for these real short days here I imagine I don't even have enough solar panels now but batteries are what make a solar system that's for sure but uh, so like a day like today cloudy overcast but windy all night you start to get interested in wind turbines and shit, but we'll see how we do here. I imagine I got loads and loads and loads of power there now. I do. Like, I've done all my calculations. Now, if I need more, well, I'll go looking for it. If I don't, I'm not going to spend money on it. Now, this is my last project, so I want to be a little more excited about it than I am, but I got an inverter issue to deal with, so just one thing after the next. I want it to be done, but what can you do? Yeah, so there's definitely some figuring I gotta do here but what I'm gonna do here now guys I'm gonna clean up around my cabin here tonight get some stuff moved out to the workshop tomorrow I'm finally getting snares out now it's November 17th today I'll start on the 18th now uh, I, uh, I this is the earliest I've got started and the most comfortable I've been here up in the bush so I got nothing to complain about I am a tad late but what can you do so I'm gonna go set snares tomorrow and then uh, take the and then the next day I'm gonna work at hauling stuff up to the bush and, and baiting other spots and stuff and, and and things like that and then and then I'll come back and turn the camera on. We'll go check some snares. I need a break from this filming thing, man. I've just been doing it however many days. So as it stands right now I have three hundred and eighty four gigabytes of video footage to go through. So it's a real, like I'm backlogged, I haven't got a chance, I had no power to charge the laptop, like nothing. But we're working all day, all night, and it's just stockpiled. So there's like two days worth of work there probably, so good work again and not caught up. 
Try to get snares out here first thing. Get the fur coming in. And I go to get uh, workshop organized. So I'm going to try and figure away at getting that all done. We're going to take the next couple of days away from the camera because we're a little bit. We're a little bit. Uh, need a break from it. So. What we're going to do here is go set some snares. And then we'll start our first chopping video here in two days. But uh, I got some figuring to do on how this power is going to work. Right now I think it's, it's dead. Like, like the batteries didn't come full charge here but I've got all these lights on because I'm just enjoying the luxury of having all this power I like even the lights outside and uh, I I haven't dropped a one percentage point in like three four hours now so it's crazy I think it's gonna be awesome I got all kinds of power here now I got power in my workshop everything is done now I just gotta figure out an inverter I get this one I don't fucking know man it's pissed me off but Anyway, so uh, we're going to have to see how much power we're generating, how we're able to keep the battery bank charged, uh, you know, what kind of power we're using and producing every day because I, beforehand with the panels I even wasn't able to get it all figured out and stuff. What are you doing, dog? So uh, that's all right on, guys. Lots of work to do yet tonight. There's no worries. Over and out, guys. Thank you for watching.